We are back, all three of us. The family's back together. Ben and Bananas. L, we missed you last week. I know. I'm so sad I had to miss out. It was good, though. Uh, Raphael, he killed it for us. Uh, my bookies, Raphael, he was all about it. I thought it was a really good show. We nailed a lot of stuff on this show. Ryan Quinn was nailing stuff. Unbelievable. Guys, I'm Dave Van Auken. To my left, undefeated, unbreakable, undeniable. Don't know how to lose L Wagman. L, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm super excited for this week, man. I like it. like it. Underneath, man, the cornerman. He's in everyone's corner. Talks to everyone. Knows everyone in the industry. Much love and respect to our guy, the Yankee, Mr. Aaron Judge. Ryan Quinn, what's up, dude? Doing good. Not too happy about a couple of moves they made today. Uh, But uh, like you said, back to the MMA stuff, right? (laughs) Yeah. Aaron Judge doesn't pay my rent. (laughs) (laughs) No, not yet. Um, Yeah. All right, real quick, uh, UFC uh, 277 is over. You know, Amanda Nunes, the GOAT is back at the GOAT status. Unbelievable performance. Just a real quick, so UFC Vegas 59, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, really nice card, right? Like the main event with Hill and Santos, the co-main, Sneaky Vicente Luque and Neil. And then it's got the ultimate fighter, two, not one, but two possible you know champions coming up. Guys, are we a little? Are we like overlooking the Ultimate Fighter? Remember back in the day, they used to have that own show, like the 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 main events or the co-main events used to be the champions. Sometimes the coaches would fight on the show, or sometimes they would save it for a pay-per-view. But I feel like we're almost overlooking the Ultimate Fighter. I feel like we're undervaluing it. Am I onto something? I don't know. Yeah, I think I think the Contender Series has changed the Ultimate Fighter. Yes. I think yeah. the the the, peop, the young guys that are coming up that are really ready to impress, most of those guys are getting those contender series shots, yeah. which sometimes leaves uh, leaves others for left over for the ultimate fighter. Because it's, it, I mean, if, if you've got a choice, if I either have to live in a house without my phone, without being able to talk to my family for weeks, or I have to fight once in front of Dana and get a contract. Like, yeah. And you make more money. <laughs> contender series. Yeah. So the guys who have who are able to choose to pick and choose, I think are going to go the contender series route. While the guys who maybe need a little bit, uh, need to show a little bit more to get in, are going to end up on the Ultimate Fighter. So I think we'll have a couple gems coming out of the Ultimate Fighter, but I don't think we're going to have the same level of competition in the Ultimate Fighter as we are in the contender series. Well played. Well said. Well said. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think we're ever going to see the same level of competition from the house, uh, the Ultimate Fighter, than the Contender Series, simply because, let's face it, they like to put their characters on there. They didn't so much now that it's on ESPN, but they like their characters on there and stuff, where you don't need to be a character to fight in Contender Series. You make more money with the Contender Series, but on top of that, I think it's being overlooked for another reason. Like, this kind of reminds me, I had this conversation with my wife, like, um, we saw the main attraction last week with Juliana and Amanda, you know, this True. is, this reminded me of, um, in game of Thrones, you game of Thrones fans. We saw, we saw the battle against the dead three weeks before we saw the bottom of the battle at King's landing. You know, we saw the main fight before we saw the rest. You know, so it's kind of like, that's how, kind of how I feel about this. Like the main attraction was Amanda and Juliana. And like, as, as I hate to say, it, cause these people are fighting hard, but the, 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 the house was like after the fact, and I think there's being treated as such after the fact. And that's why, you know, it's not main eventing anything. It's it's co-main eventing. No, it's not. It's not even co-main eventing. Yeah, it's not so, even the co. Yeah, it's wild. So, yeah, I, I think that they could have done a little better. Or, man, they could have put these two cards on the on the prelims or, the, or even the main card of underneath Amanda and Juliana, put some blood back in the Ultimate Fighter. Maybe I, they just don't want to do that. I beautiful said there, Ryan, as dads, right? We know this. We can't give our kids dessert first. You have to give them dinner. They have to eat dinner to get dessert. So well played. Also, guys, like um, the main event of the, the pay-per-view, I think it, I don't want to go down too far this rabbit hole. So I'll kind of try to wrap it up quickly and just maybe real quick back from you guys. I feel they're not doing the pay-per-view fight card justice. I feel sometimes the third or fourth fight is a little bit weaker as a pay-per-view fight for a, a you know card. They could have easily, they could have like washed this card. They could have kind of put Santos and Hill on the pay-per-view main, you know, the main card. They could have added our tough two champions on the prelims. And then this week, you ready? This could have been a buy. This could have gave us some breath of air, a fresh air, really can, uh, all in on the contender or LFA. Uh, Jorge Masvidal's icon is Friday night in Savannah, Georgia. Just would really give some air to breathe 
but they just do card after card after card for week. Sometimes, like some of these pay per view cards, I don't know if you guys peeked at the Chemayev and Diaz pay per view card. It's horrendous. And then even uh, 278 Salt Lake City, there's like two fights on there. I'm like, that is not a pay per view fight. It's not well, like you know what you know what happens sometimes. And this actually happened with uh, when George and Colby fought. Um, we knew that they were going to fight. We didn't know when. Actually, we thought George and Kobe were going to fight like several weeks to, to a couple months later. But some championship fight fell through for the main event, yeah, and they needed to fill it with something with pop. So that might have happened, and it, it, it kind of jumbled things around. It's like a lineup, right? Like a baseball lineup. Yeah. Just, uh, they they got to they fill it. You know, fans need their fill. And that's kind of what happened. I hear you. Yeah. All right, five minutes in. We haven't mentioned uh, Diego Santos, Jamal Hill main event. Uh, guys, this is a really good card. Brian Battles on the card. He's underneath. Um, Terrence McKenna, a ton of stuff. But let's go. L, lead us off. You're back. What is your absolute best bet? That's when people, that's when money we're off the bat. Well, where are we going? I got to let me grab my notes. Okay. So my best bet, and this never happens for me. Okay. So, you know, I am. Almost always, if there's a female fight, especially a female fight where I'm not sure about the winner, I am always betting the under. This week is not the case. Stephanie Egger and Myra Buena Silva are both known finishers. They both have knockouts. They both have submissions. They're both very dangerous. And I think sometimes when we have two knockout artists fight, we run into this, like, we either have fireworks or we have this super boring fight where they're both nervous to engage with the other and neither of them pull the trigger and then we have the world's most boring decision these girls are grappling finishers stephanie egger is a phenomenal judoka uh really high level judo um and then you've got Mar myra buena silva who is very high level jujitsu and they both are decent on the feet as well they both have knockouts they both have a lot of finishes and i don't think we run into the that boring weird non-engagement fight when we have two grappling finishers so i'm actually going to take the under two and a half rounds which is plus 187 i think the value's there and i think it's going to surprise a lot of people that's going to be a really great fight Ooh, starting off the day with a plus 187 on the under i like that a lot all right ryan take us away what is your best bet on the board man i i saw this and i, I was through the whole season, I was saying, man, he's reserved. He's being reserved. I got Muhammad Usman over Zach Pelga. I just think that um, the whole season, everything we saw, like I was just like – I was watching U Usman like that. I was watching just like, come on, you could you could do a little more. I think the athleticism is there. I think he was a little reserved. It's a weird situation. Obviously, you know, with, uh, everyone's thinking of his brother when he's out there. But now he's relaxed. He's away from it. And uh, Zach – I feel like Zach has reached more or less his apex from what I've seen, you know. He was an athlete before. A lot of times when people come into mixed martial arts, um, you know, it's not like he came straight over from football. He got a job, then he went to football. This is kind of like, oh, let me see if I can do this again. That's what I felt like him. So I think he's kind of at his potential where, you know, going back to who Usman's brother is, you know, he's at a camp where he's going to make those adjustments. He's going to be able to let loose. So I got him winning. Uh, that's my lock of the night. All right. He's up plus 195. The, we needed like a siren or something. Uh, we, we made a little switch here on bed and bananas. We're going to have like a little banana. We're going to have some kind of hat thing that we're, we're sending off. So, uh, Ryan, I'm going to take off my host. I challenge you right now to our first uh, banana hat. Dude, uh, Zach is going to demolish Usman's <laughs> little brother. This is one of my locks of the night. Uh, the guy's oh, minus two thirty. Should be minus five hundred. This is easy money. Are you really going with Usman's little brother? Dude. Are we doing we're gonna, this? We're we're gonna see. Yep, yep. I can't. You and I, the three of us, we're gonna run into his brother, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring. No, I'm kidding. No. no. The worst. <laughs> I talked to Mo when he fought on Titan FC. He came on the podcast. The nicest guy. He really is a nice guy. Mm. I've actually heard really nice stuff about him. I just think he's. Uh, no disrespect at all. The last name helps him a lot in his career. I've seen him. Uh, you know, I, I remember him watching him in the PFL. He's just not well-rounded to say the least. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to go too much negative on it. I just think Zach's going to get the job done. I just think he will defeat Usman's little brother in the, in that, in that fight. I, I think I'm with you, Dave. I, I didn't, I stayed away from that, that fight on the, on the betting cards this, this time on the betting lines, but I, I think I'm with you. I think, if you look at who they fought before the show as well, he yes. definitely fought the tougher competition. Yes. Uh, Usman had a lot of guys with 500 records on there. He's he's very fairly one dimensional. 
Um, I think he's going to struggle with the cardio. I, I, I think I'm leaning towards leaning towards what uh, Dave's saying as well. I, I think Not he fought a dentist on Titan FC. True story. True story. I think he fought a dentist. I think but, adjustments uh, will be made. I'm sticking hey, to I, it. I, Hey, that's why the that's why the round the world goes round. I love it. I I respect it. And I actually I give you credit where credit's due. You you could have put down the underdog spot. You put that as your best bet. I I have nothing but respect yep. on this side of the camera. But we'll keep it rolling. What is your underdog play, L Wagman? Who you who's got plus money that's going to win us back? I am absolutely shook at these lines. Takashi Sato is going to absolutely destroy Brian Battle. The best guy that Brian Battle fought before he went on the show was two and one. Two and one, three fights. That's the best record he beat before the show. The two guys he's beat in the UFC, neither of them have a single win. Takashi Sato is losing to Miguel Baeza, Gunnar Nelson, by decision, by the way, a very close fight, and a guy named, I don't know, Bilal Muhammad. The fact that these guys are even in the same conversation blows my mind. Sato is an absolute monster. I know he's he's on a losing streak. I I think that that's that's just blows my mind that he is uh, he's that big of an underdog right now. I respect that as well. I'm uh, me and Brian actually are uh, friends. We go way back. I do respect it. The one little thing I will come back a little bit just as a conversational piece is uh, sometimes even I, Sato. Ha I agree with you. Has fought four times the better competition and tougher competition. But is he getting used to being on the wrong side of those fights and is starting to feel being on the L? And Brian Battle, who's uh, hasn't went against the toughest competition, but he's finding ways to win fights. Even I think he lost the first round to uh, Treshawn Gore. I remember he got hit pretty hard and then won round two and three. I like that, that he's finding ways to win fights. Um, so, but I, I do like, I do think he's. Uh, say to, uh, very undervalued. I, I got him at plus 195 right now. I thought that was going to be around a 130, 115 either way, right? Um, yeah, so I do agree. I do think the value is off on that side. I do agree with that. Ryan and Quinn, my man, what you got? What, oh. get it done. He can. I just, man, I, I just don't think he's ready. I don't think, I, like, that's a big yep. jump to go from yep. Trayshawn Gore, who I think had three professional fights at the time, to go from 3-0 and to Takashi Sato, a dude who's, like, knocking out Jason Witt, like, I, man, I just don't, I don't see it. So true. You perfectly said Sean O'Malley's making that big jump to Jan, and he's a plus 400 underdog. When you make that big jump, especially in the UFC, you become the underdog. Battle, like you're saying, is making that jump, and he's the favorite. So I agree with what you're saying. It, it has logic behind it. I like it. Ryan, what's your underdog play, my man? man and the, the, there, this was a tough card to pick from as far as the underdogs, but – uh I like this one, actually. I think that the line would be a little bit closer had he not had so much of a layoff. But I like Jeff Neal over Vicente Luke. Um, he had a big win over Santiago Ponzinibbio back in June. I mean, uh, December. And then he hasn't fought since. But um, I just look, you know, between Vicente fighting a lot of guys with ATT on the Ultimate Fighter, fighting him in the UFC. Um, aside from Tyron, who Tyron, you know, kind of really declined later on in his career. He's had trouble with these uh, stockier guys that can get underneath and especially like uh that's kind of what jeff Neal does he's got explosion explosiveness and then he um he played football in college so whenever somebody plays football in college they just have a natural mma double leg and i i just think that that's going to be in use he's going to be able to move his head and just get under and grind uh, grind vicente out i like that i like that i was leaning vicente luke but that's very well said mm -hmm. very well said um okay mm -hmm. let's keep it rolling three fight parlay a ton of uh, fights to go to. We like we haven't even hit the main event. I think Jamal Hill a minus a two sixty. I th I think is a good parlay piece. That's just my two cents. I like Juliana Miller at minus one twenty five. You hear what I, I like? Zach at minus two thirty. That's a lot of high stuff. I didn't even get to the undercard stuff. L Wagman three fight parlay. My friend, take it away. I'm so excited about this week, guys. This is the parlay to end all parlays. I have all plus money plays. And I feel really, really good about it. Okay, so first uh, first leg of my parlay is going to be Brogan Walker Sanchez. Um, I uh, I was actually really surprised to see her as an underdog as well. I think this goes back, uh, just like my argument for Takashi Sato over Brian Battle. Man, Brogan has fought much tougher competition before the show. 
And she is the bigger fighter. She's a more physical fighter. If you look at her resume, she beat Gabby Romero in Invicta, a very high level jujitsu black belt. She was very dominant in her win over Miranda Maverick, who I think has significantly better striking and also sets up her takedowns better than Juliana Miller. And these are old fights. These are previous fights. I think her only losses, uh, Bergen Watcher Walker Sanchez's only losses are Pearl Gonzalez and Aaron Blanchfield, who Pearl at the time was dominating. And Aaron is absolutely obviously just taking away, taking off with her UFC career right now. Uh, those are both super tough fights and she's never been finished. Juliana Miller hasn't either, but her record before the show was also uh, well, significantly less fights, um, mostly grappling matches. And I think Brogan is going to be able to control the range. She has great hips, great takedown defense. I definitely see her grinding out a decision over um, over Juliana Miller. I didn't go for the over in this one. I just went Brogan as the winner. Um, okay. And then I also have my best bet in there, which was Stephanie Egger and Myra Buena Silva going the under two and a half rounds. And then I had my underdog play in there as well with Takashi Sato. The value on that for my bookie was plus sixteen fifty. Wow. Plus one ninety five. I'm writing that right now in a permanent black marker. I'm sorry, guys. I was a little late on that transition, but I'm writing this down. Plus sixteen fifty. That's the biggest three fight parlay we've had on Ben and Bananas history. That's nice. I'm trying to make you money. I'm trying. That is. It's hmm. when you hear it out loud, too, guys. That. I think Elle's on to something. She nails her three five parlays at least every other week. That's a good one, Elle. That's a good one. Well, hats off. Hats off. Ryan, where are you looking at, man? Three five parlay. Right. Where are we going? Yeah, well, Elle kind of beat this one into the, into the ground. But uh, yeah, Stephanie Ager, Mar Marabano, uh, Bueno Silva, I have in the under as well. Um, to piggyback off what Elle said, a mistake will be made and capitalized on. Um, then the next one I have. Um, I love Sam Alvey. I know him personally. Um, when people ask me how his career is going the last couple of years, I tell them that he's got the nicest smile in mixed martial arts. I just think that uh, Michael Oleg Chuyip, Oleg Chuyip, Chuy uh, Michael O is uh, he, he's been looking really good. He's on his way up. You know, Sam's you know kind of around, and you know that's a name that I would look to come after. I just don't see Sam. I, I see Sam go, seeing the distance. I don't see him winning that fight. And now this last one, this is really tough for me. I feel kind of like Pete Rose. You've, I've tried my hardest not to do this here. I do not like Tiago Santos' chances against Gemma Hall Hill. Um, I think that uh, Gemma Hall Hill, he's got that he, he's got that really good long boxing style, which is not very good for a striker like Tiago, who's relying on the the big kicks, the knees, the elbows. His boxing, like he, he's got the tie boxing down. Um, uh, so I just really like Jamal in that fight. And that being said. He, there's no better coach in the business than Cattell Kubis that's able to make a kickboxer implement his style into a mixed martial arts event, and that is Tiago's coach. So those of you who pay attention to the live line, see how the fight's going about seven and a half minutes in, and then place another bet. But as of right now, I got John Mahal Hill going. Okay. All right. I – I like Jamal Hill a lot. I was just going to say that if you didn't mention that we had to talk about the main event, so I'm happy, Ryan, you did nail on that. Mm -hmm. Just real quick, I, I know, Ryan, you had Neil L, because you haven't really mentioned the main event or co-main event. Just a real quick 15-second synopsis on both fights. Which way are you leaning if you're leaning one way or another? I, I obviously stayed away from it on the lines this week, but I I don't think – once again, we got to go back to strength of schedule. Like, yes, I know Tiago has not looked great lately, and especially compared, I know he's older, he's, he's coming up in age, uh, he's had the injuries, he's had the issues with his knee. I don't know that we've seen him truly recover from the John Jones fight, but if we look at who he's losing to recently, he's lost to two former champions, Glover and John Jones, as well as most likely the future champion, Magomed Ankalaev. I You can't convince me that that dude's not gonna hold the belt very, very soon, especially after this last weekend. Um, and I, I think the strength of schedule is very different. So this is definitely Hill's toughest test. Um, Santos is absolutely not known for not having a chin. He's tough as nails. He has phenomenal kickboxing. Um, it's going to be a fantastic fight. That like Santos is never boring. I'm happy you said that because that's where I was leaning this. I don't think it's been brought up. And uh, you know me, I listen to podcasts nonstop about this fight. I want to see Jamal Hill in the fifth round. Like, this is where I think was uncharted waters. Uh, everyone thinks 
this fight is going to lean in Jamal Hill. And I think he's going to win too. But if this goes 23 minutes, it's one of these Giga versus Calvin Cater type of things. I know Calvin Cater can go against 25 minutes against any human on this planet. I feel good about it. And same thing with Santos. Santos can have one fucking knee and go 25 minutes with the GOAT. So I feel good about that. Jamal Hill, I don't know. Until I see him go 22, 18, 24 minutes. Like Santos at a plus, I think he was plus 185, guys, 175, somewhere in there. It's not bad. I like that a lot. And I was leaning, I was leaning Vicente as well. But then I thought Ryan had great points on Neil. I think both underdogs are real live in the co and in the main event. I, I stay completely away from it. And, and I absolutely agree with Ryan on the live lines for uh, the main event. But I think the co-main as well. I, I think, man, I, I know I know Neil has some fantastic striking, but so does Luke. And Luke is yeah, definitely yeah. the more dangerous guy. And I, they're both beating high-level guys. But the way that Luke is beating those guys is definitely more dominant right now. Neil is having some closer decisions. Um, he's had a couple of razor thin ones. And then Luke, man, Luke subbing Kiesa, who is the sub guy, yeah, yeah. submitting. And uh, Grant called that, and he'll chew me out if I don't give him credit for that. He was like, he's good at Darson. Luke has a great Darson. And he did. Um, sub, subbing T Wood. You know, like uh, Luke is a much more dangerous fighter than Neil is. So I, I think watching the live lines on that fight as well is going to be really important. If you see if you see Neil moving really well on the outside, Luke is not able to get on the inside. Use those knees, use those elbows, use his fantastic clench work. If if you see Luke pushing Neil against the cage, you might want to start putting some bets on Luke. If you start seeing him entering that clench, because that is where Luke makes it happen with his striking and with the grappling as well. So funny you mentioned that uh, very handsome Grant Dawson. I almost had my graphic designer made an artwork because Jamal Hill said he was the most successful contender series guy. And everyone, when you think contender series, you you think of Jamal Hill, but you also think of Sugar Sean O'Malley with Snoop Dogg and your right favorite. It's really iconic that moment. And he's very, very successful. But I kept on saying in the back of my head, like before I saw any other graphic and I saw that Grant put it on his Instagram story today, I was like, Grant Dawson does have six fucking wins in the UFC, doesn't he? Like, he does have, I think, the most UFC wins out of that class. A little underrated now, a little underrated, people. I don't want to jump on the uh, Grant Dawson bandwagon, but uh, come on now. <laughs> show, the, show our guy some love. But uh, That's crazy. Absolutely. I thought it was good. I think we nailed it. That was, I'm really, um, I'm super intrigued with these ultimate fighters. I was leaning Juliana Miller. You really sold me on Brogdon, not going to lie. Really sold me. And me and Ryan, we have our first uh, banana bet. I'm going with our guy, Zach. Uh, Ryan's going with uh, uh, this guy named Kamara Usman's little brother. I don't know. We'll see. We'll figure that out. <laughs> oh, man. I will not be wearing a big banana on my head next week. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I love it. All right. Trivia, lead us away, Ryan. You had a great question oh. last week. I oh. Last week last week was the, the – what was the question? Oh. Who who has won a major title in Bellator in the UFC? The answer is Eddie Alvarez. Now, oh, that's a good let's, one. Let's stick to the Bellator Championship stuff. Now, for those of you who were when Bellator first came up, in order to get to fight the champion, of course there was an organ. We had to win a tournament in order to fight the champion. There's only been two fighters to win the tournament, go on to win the belt. And then win it again after they got went away with the tournament status. So they're two time champions, at least once coming through the tournament, and then they won the belt back. Who are those two fighters? Crazy, crazy. Um, that's a great question. That's a good one. A uh, last little inkling of information I got from this past weekend, and the PFL is in New York City. Uh, I will not be there. And also, this is the last fight banana stuff I'm doing. I'm going on a family vacation. I'm literally going to turn off my phone maybe for an hour, maybe an hour and a half if I get away <laughs> with it. I can't wait yeah. just to kind of ease my uh, weekend coming up. But um, I heard Dana White told someone that I talked to that he absolutely hates tournaments. He thinks it's the most obscene thing in MMA he goes, it's just, it's not basketball. It's not games. He's like, there's so much shit like with, with the teams and like coaches and then agents, he goes, it's just so hard. Like you just can't have a real legitimate tournament in uh, 2022 and 2023. And, you know, like, you know, I'm sorry, but he says that, and I'm sorry to cut you off. He says no, that, good, but, but he's definitely done four or five tournaments before. You know, the first one that comes to mind and granted this is like 10 years ago now, but 
they'll do it again is when they had the interim heavyweight champion and then the heavyweight title they, right. they had um they had Nogara versus Frank Mir for the the interim belt and Brock Lesnar versus Randy for the championship and winner fought each other and now they're doing these interim titles a lot you'll see this again you'll, you'll see these little not tournaments tournaments of these four man brackets like uh, that that's what I think anyway so remember I last mean, January I in uh, Abu Dhabi it was Connor and Poirier yeah. was the main event, but it was Chandler and Hooker was like the co-main, and it was like everyone yeah. was leaning into there. The, the the championship, I think, was Habib at the time who kind of retired. Dana won mm. the back. That was we all knew that was setting itself up for what's next. So crazy. Yeah. So I mean, I I'm not. I don't know. I'm, I I like the Grand Prix every once in a while. I love them oh, Pride did too. it, so I can't Grand complain. Prix, guys. So. <laughs> Guys, this was maybe our longest bed of bananas. Let's go back, watch The Contender. This is Tuesday night. Spoiler alert. I cannot wait. I'm a huge Contender Series guy. I got to rewind. I can't miss anything. L Wagman, appreciate you. We'll talk to you very soon. Ryan, the Quinn, uh Quinn, keep on doing your stuff, man. And uh, guys, have a great weekend. Uh, Later. Don't call me. No one text me. I'll talk to you guys on Tuesday. All right. Have a good one. <laughs>